expertise becomes more precise and that expresses itself in in one way of characterizing it is deeper knowledge but how it tests is in more specific knowledge that can become represented in formulas that's what happens and as we learn things we'll learn it with a uh, uh, that eventually can be represented in these formulas, and then that can be automated. That's what I encourage everybody to participate in, is participate in that series of steps to then automate their own jobs. If you participate in that, then you can participate in the deployment of AI. If you, if you ignore that, you, you are going to be at the effect of the deployment of AI. That's a much less comfortable place to be. Yeah, let's talk about that. How do we to your point, participate, or how do we manage the use of AI? And let's put this in the context of organizations and thinking from a management level. If we think that AI is, is not going to help us, we're going to be out of jobs. If we think, hey, we need to use AI, but don't know where to turn, that's what I'm curious about. So how do you participate in the use of AI? Well, I am excited that we can see this right now with ChatGPT. I don't think we're leaning on this too heavily to say that it's done an amazing service to all of us by making visible a really accessible vision of what AI means in our world. When I was in government, I was really working my hardest to bring a broader section of the population into the conversation about it. That's really difficult, but, but it's necessary because otherwise, you know, nerds like me who grew up in a basement with computers and, and wanted to, would, would be really happy, and this is quite literal, happy optimizing the performance of my video card for my video games. I would just continue to do that. And now as a business person doing that just for my quarterly objectives about the development of a product. That's dangerous, not just for society, but it's dangerous because we all have our own little myopia, our own little bubbles. And I want other people to give feedback because otherwise I have a risk of deploying my software and having it be resisted. I want it to be embraced. So I need a richer set of, of feedback to be given. The you know Microsoft and OpenAI deserve a lot of credit because they released some of these features in some ways an open environment, but at least in their chat function in a little controlled environment and in a sense restricted it based on it's opened up the public imagination in any case to how we can be using AI in our jobs. It certainly started the conversation, but people are now exploring how can chat GPT affect my job. It brings home the point that I've been trying to make in innumerable different ways over the past decade, but now is so much easier, which is you're not going to get replaced with a computer. You're going to get replaced with a human using a computer. Right. Yeah, that's such a, such a point. Eh? It's a human who knows how to interact and use these tools. It's like somebody who was stuck on a typewriter who refused to move over to a well, I guess, to a massive desktop at the time or something like this. It won't replace jobs so much as, as you'll be replaced by somebody who can engage and interact with it. One of our partners, we've been working on some AI applications with including like ChatGPT to see, to see what it's all about. He's a computer scientist. And I've been really interested to see how he interacts with it because he's been sending me the conversations back and forth. And the way he kind of speaks to it and provides the data he wants. It's just like, wow, it's an interesting kind of exploration into how to use these tools. I want to ask a question next about, you mentioned the headlines, chat GPT. And I believe it was, you know, OpenAI had kind of a, uh, they opened it up to, to a series of journalists and there's been a, a number of headlines that have come back with some conversations, which you could say went a little bit sideways and felt rather uncomfortable. I'm not sure if you, if you've seen any of these, but the point being is that it drives that conversation again of, of will AI become sentient and is there a danger to humans? What's your take on this? You know, the danger to humans is they just misinterpret what's going on. One of the scariest comments I got was someone empathizing with the robot that they were being bullied. And I thought, wow, that is off the mark. You know, these are not sentient beings. They don't have feelings. So that is d super dangerous. Now, whether that person tired or jet lagged, which, which I often am, or, or what they genuinely think that 
though that sort of interpretation of what's going on is potentially frightening especially when we live in an age of already trying to deal with misinformation you know?